Today we are at Orchid Lake near Oxford, joined by prolific carp catcher Kev Hewitt. Kev's going to show us a rig that he's been using for the last 18 months, almost exclusively. And he's caught untold amounts of big fish from various waters on this rig. As you can see behind us, the lake's partially frozen. It got down to minus five here last night. So the chances of catching anything today are really remote. Um, Kev's rods are actually frozen into the lake. But we're going to talk about a session Kev had on here a few weeks ago where he caught an incredible hit of fish. When was it Kev? It was early January wasn't it? First week of yeah, January. Yeah, first week of January. Um, the weather just looked absolutely bang on. It was, there was a nice wind coming in. I, I wasn't supposed to be fishing that weekend, but when I saw the forecast, I couldn't not get the carp rods out. Yeah. It was one of those that you just knew that if you were in the right place at the right time, something could happen. So it was, it was double figures, and it was really windy. Yeah. And you don't get that very often in the first week of January. So got myself down to walk it, um, had a quick wander around. And first thing in the morning, I saw a couple of fish show out in front of the swim pool at the Alamo. Right. And the guy that was in there was just packing up so I just knew I had to get in that yeah. swim so I had a wander around and he packed up in the afternoon and um, I got in there and in, in the first 24 hours um, it all held just great yeah, it, it was like the most incredible session you'll ever have yeah. or I'll ever have in January um, my mate actually come down the following day so he, he joined me for a day session and in a 24 hour period between us we had 27 fish with 10 of them over 30 pounds. Um, I mean, that would be a massive hit at any time of the year. Yeah, any time of the year. That's just um, ridiculous. You know, it's a once in a lifetime kind yeah. of catch, but to catch it in January makes it extra special. But we had some absolutely gorgeous fish. The yeah. biggest I had was just over 36, and the biggest Ben had was 38 12. Wow. So we had some right old lumps between us as well. You were struggling to keep the, all, sort of, all the rods in the water. Yeah, point, it, it all went mental. At one point, we had four thirties at once in the, in the nets and slings, and it was just nice. hectic. <laughs> um, something that you wouldn't associate with January, but it just goes to show if you can yeah. get your tactics right, get the rigs right, get the bait right, and put yourself in that place when the weather's right yeah. and in the right swim, if you've seen some fish and you can get on them, then anything's yeah, possible. It's possible, yeah. So I know these fish all caught on one particular type of rig, wouldn't they? So let's have a look at that rig now. Okay, well, the hinge stiff rig has been around for absolutely donkey's years, and this is kind of my version or yeah. my take on it, and I've made a few tweaks to it and a few differences to, like, the, the one that's been out there for, for all that time. But um, just looking at it, um, I'll start off with the hook baits. Um, I always try and match the hook baits to the items that I'm feeding. Yeah. So, for, for the most part, my spawn mix consists of 10 mil boilies, sweet corn and hemp, nice and simple. So, I've just got a mega buoyant sort of 10 mil pop-up, just tipped with plastic corn, yeah. so it just matches the food items yeah. that I'm putting out. It's nice and visual as well. It is, yeah. and, and it's perfect. So, um, just looking at the rig, um, this is a ready tied chod rig in shorts, and um, the, it's all the same materials that I used to tie a few years ago. So I used to use the stiff rig of Mark IIs, I used to use the bristle filament, and when the ready-made chod rigs come out, they were absolutely perfectly tied, far yeah. better than what I could actually tie right. myself. You know, just tying those short yeah. ones is really yeah. hard to get them short and get that knot. So um, they're, they're absolutely superb, and they just never, ever let you down. Yeah. Every single one is super sharp out of the packet, and they've already got that perfect curve. Yeah. Do you fish that critically balanced curve? No, I always fish it over heavy, so I attach putty around the swivel here yeah. and just slightly further up the hook link, so I want it overweighted so it's nailed to the bottom every time. Right. With, with the sort of semi-stiff material that we're going to talk about in a moment, uh, the last thing you want is it to just go over a, a little bit of a rock or, or a bit of weed, and it, yeah. if it's too stiff and underweighted, it could just kick right up off the bottom. Yeah. As opposed to the way I fish it, the, the swivel's overweighted, so it will just come down and nail on the bottom every time. Right. Um, looking a little bit further up, we mentioned the stiffness of the material. Um, I use a 25 pound two tone braid, mm -hmm. which is, I class it as a semi stiff yeah. sort of coated braid, so it always kicks away, 
it always kicks away from the, the, the swivel and always straightens out and resets itself. Yeah. Um, and also the knot strength is superb on it. So I use just a simple overhand loop knot to attach to attach it to the ring swivel. And um, you just want to dampen it down when you're pulling the knot tight, but you don't want to use overcomplicated knots because what you can tend to do is you can strangle the braid. And as you're tightening it, you can drag all the coating off the braid back and then you'll have an uncoated section and it'll be an extra hinge, which you don't want. So just a simple overhand loop knot is perfect for on that. And as you can see, I've got just a little bit of putty further up the hook link just to keep it again it's pinned right hands. down to the, yeah. to the deck. So looking a little bit further up again, I use a streamliner rig boom. And these rig booms are mega stiff, again, for, for anti-tangled properties. When, I, when I'm casting out, the, the, as you can see, the boom just kicks it away. So there's no way that rig can tangle around it's the lead clip, around the swivel. Yeah. It's impossible to tangle. So so long as you hit the clip and feather it down, there is no way that it's going to tangle. And as you can see, when the lead hits the bottom, the rig's always going to kick out. And, and the hook bait's always going to be on a fairly straight line yeah. and it's always going to be pushed so away from the ring. With the when the fish picks it exactly, up. so every time the fish picks it up, and I use quite heavy lead, I tend to use a 4 ounces or above, A, because I'm fishing at a fairly good distance quite a lot of the time, and B, I want that heavy lead so when the fish picks up the rig, it sets the hook and they're absolutely yeah. nailed. And um, moving a little bit further back, I use, um, I use an adjustable lead clip. If, it's, if the leg's quite weedy, then I just pull the, take the lead clip back and only pull the tail rubber on a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So if I need to eject the lead, that, the lead will pop off when I get the take. And for places like this on orchids, there's no weed, there's no snags. So I, the last thing I want to do is be ejecting the lead yeah, yeah. unnecessarily. So I just push the tail rubber all the way on and, and you keep the lead on for most of the time when you're, you're playing a fish. So traditionally, you know, the hinge stiffening approach has always been so safe. As a single hook bait approach, but you fish it over spot nets, which is a little bit against the grain, isn't it? Why, why do you do that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I tend to sort of do my own thing, I don't sort of follow the rule books, yeah. I try things out, and if they work, they work, you know. Um, so, yeah, as, as we mentioned, the, the spot mix that I use is mainly small items, yeah. small boilies, sweet corn, and hemp. And I tend to put all my bait in on a real tight spot, so I try and keep it nice and compact to the when the fish come in, they're always feeding, and I fish three rods over the top. Right. So when a fish is feeding on my bait, it's never more than a foot or two away from a rig. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's that's ideal. And when fish come along, and when they're feeding on particles, their fins are wafting around, yeah. and a lot of the bait is sort of like coming up off of the deck, and and sometimes they're taking it as it's up yeah. off the deck. Um, and also, I've got some great video footage of fish that will come along, and they're just cruising along the bottom, their the mouth just an inch or two off the deck. And I think sometimes those type of fish can just pick up your hook bait without actually tilting up and feeding on, on the bait. Yeah. So as they're works. cruising along, yeah, yeah, you can see why it works. And if it does come along and picks up a rig and spits yeah. it out, it swims another two birds, and it's got enough <laughs> one to deal one. with. Yeah, brilliant. And I, I, I don't think they can get away with that rig no. twice.